Well, right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope all you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is on Frank Lampard. How does Frank Lampard play? How does he set his Chelsea team out? What formations does he utilize on the pitch? A lot of people were wondering what is Frank Lampard's tactical approach because they know he likes high possession, relatively high octane attacking football, and he likes to use youth and pressing. But no one really understood for a long time what his preferred formation was, and that's because the truth is he does like to be tactically flexible. So, I wanted to make a video where I show you what shapes he's been using this season, some sort of nuance to his tactical approach, and basically just making it simpler for everyone to understand. So, if you're interested in Chelsea tactics, news and analysis, why not subscribe to Football Therapy if you are new to the channel, like the video, help me out, follow me on the socials, all right, let's get into it. Right, so Frank Lampard came to Chelsea Football Club, was appointed manager, and people wondered, hey, how is he gonna play? Well, if you looked at his Derby County side, you'll know that he did prefer a 4-2-3-1, and also played a 4-3-3. And when he arrived at Chelsea, it did look like he wanted to make the 4-2-3-1 his preferred formation. He played a lot of his preseason games like that, and that kind of shape affords Chelsea, or a football team, the opportunity to do a lot of attacking football, breaking the lines, because you've got a conventional number 10, you've got wingers, and of course a centre forward. And Frank Lampard does use a 4-2-3-1 sometimes, although he's using it less and less this Premier League season. Early doors this campaign, he had Jorginho and Kovacic as the double pivot, sitting at the bottom of his midfield, which for a long time worked very, very well indeed. Mason Mount is one of the players that Lampard trusts the most, as he's already had a year before the start of this campaign playing under Lampard so he understands his ideas. He was deployed as the number 10 in the 4-2-3-1 and of course we know about Tammy Abraham at the top and also, well, rotating wingers on the side, Pulisic when fit, Callum Hudson-Odoi when he's come into the side, as well as Willian and Pedro. And of course, at times, Mason Mount has played on the left wing. Although Frank Lampard generally prefers the 4-2-3-1 formation, I'm sure a lot of you remember that this left Chelsea incredibly vulnerable in the earliest stages of this campaign on the transition. Chelsea were really poor about the ball, especially on counter-attacks. As soon as they changed from the offensive to the defensive transition, they were in big trouble. They were giving away loads of goals, and this was a huge problem for the Blues that not only was Frank Lampard talking about and people who were interested in tactics, but it got to the point where general football media was talking about it. So, Frank Lampard changed from the 4-2-3-1 and went to the formation he's been using most ever since, and that is the 4-3-3. Much like Maurizio Sarri's 4-3-3, Frank Lampard saw a lot of success with the midfield three of Kovacic, Jorginho and Kante, certainly against Liverpool at home and in the Super Cup it looked very good indeed. Mason Mount was still in this side but he was being deployed at left wing at this point. Frank Lampard didn't want to lose him in the side because of his pressing, how important there is to how Chelsea play. But suddenly it looked a lot different without a number 10 occupying that space in the hole, so a lot of attacking prowess left. Even though Kante got a couple of goals and Kovacic scored his first couple of Chelsea goals this season, nothing really was happening from midfield offensively and a lot of possession. It was very good at ball retention, this formation, shape and personnel. You weren't really getting much out of it. And of course, another big formation that I want to talk about that Frank Lampard has deployed this season is the 3-4-3 formation. We saw its most notable early performance this campaign when Frank Lampard deployed this shape away at Wolverhampton Wanderers and scored five goals, winning I think 5-2 it was, and Chelsea demonstrating they can absolutely do the Antonio Conte formation of a 3-4-3. Reese James being deployed as a right wing back. Marcus Alonso coming back in from the cold to play his best position at left wing back. And Frank Lampard also has four very, very good centre backs at the club in Christensen, Tomori, Zuma and Rudiger. So he can certainly pick a decent three out of the four to play a free centre back system. N'Golo Kante of course does his best work in a two man midfield and this offers him the opportunity to do so in this formation and then Lampard can select his front three at will and since that early outing at Wolves this formation has helped Frank many many times along the way it offers incredible width on the flanks um, and basically offers a different offensive dynamic that the opposition are not always ready for. Frank Lampard can thank this formation and shape for some massive performances in the Premier League as well, most notably doing the double over bitter London rivals Tottenham Hotspur, managed by a certain Jose Mourinho. Alright, so I've gone through some tactical shapes and formations with you guys, but what's he actually doing? What's happening on the pitch? Well, like I said, Frank Lampard is massively into the press and winning the ball back, so whether it's a 40 
4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, when out of possession, Frank Lampard's team becomes a 4-4-2. A flat 4-4-2 where the wingers tuck in, Tammy Abraham presses from the front, but usually Mason Mount from central midfield joins the striker to sort of press in synchronicity and try and win the ball back in a flat 4-4-2 formation. Two banks of four of course offers defensive rigidity and the high octane press of Mason Mount which arguably is the best in the league for a midfielder can join the striker, break off the passing channels, win the ball back and the other players can join the game again. This is something you'll see almost every game from Frank Lampard's Chelsea. Lately Frank Lampard's Chelsea have been playing a little bit different and it's been really impressive with Olivier Giroud coming back into the side who did look lost in this Chelsea side earlier in the season when he was given a chance looks much more at home and that's because in a 4-3-3 formation Olivier Giroud no longer stays up and just plays as a target man he drops down and kind of becomes the tip of a diamond in a 4-4-2 diamond now Frank Lampard's actually played a 4-4-2 diamond before in pre-season with two strikers and obviously a diamond of midfielders and it did not work Michy Batshuayi and Tammy Abraham had no synchronicity and generally this shape didn't look that great but this kind of diamond is different. Both of the wingers get in front of Giroud and tuck in, and uh, Giroud becomes the tip of the diamond, but not like a conventional number 10 who would occupy that role in space. He is, I guess, like a target man deep, so he basically wins the ball, is a bouncing board for the uh, running midfielders or wingers advancing forwards, or he just flicks on the ball like he did for Willian the other day and basically becomes essentially a bouncing board. This is when Giroud is at his best, but if you look at the shape, it very much is a diamond on the offensive transition and it works incredibly well and once you're in the final third, Giroud can join the attack. Another interesting thing that's happened lately in these last couple of games for Chelsea Football Club is when Chelsea have had the midfield of Billy Gilmore, Ross Barkley and Mason Mount, Ross Barkley has switched into the front three for large parts of the game. For example, in Chelsea's 4-0 win over Everton, Ross Barkley swapped with Pedro for long periods of time becoming the right winger and Pedro becoming the right central midfielder. This completely switches up the dynamics on the places of the pitch that they're occupying. For example, Ross Barkley becomes a very physical, almost striker-like figure that can hold up the ball in the final third and Pedro, who's very slight, dynamic and mobile, becomes a pressing midfielder more inside. Frank Lampard likes the idea of filling in and rotating roles. Obviously, that can be very damaging to a formation in the lineup depending on how the game plays out but this kind of nuances in the game are very very important if you can't break down an opposition team you need to switch things up and keep the opponent guessing essentially so there we have it for the moment Frank Lampard uses three different formations mainly you could argue four if you want to talk about the diamond from the 4-3-3 of Olivier Giroud because often it does actually stay in that shape but the important thing to note is Frank Lampard and Jody Morris are not at all afraid to try different shapes and approaches depending on the opposition they do not have this dogmatic philosophy where they will only keep one way of playing. I guess one sort of recurring theme throughout all these different formations and tactical approaches are high octane, high energy, pressing football. I guess that's the main reason Frank Lampard has always maintained he wants Mason Mount in the side because of his energy levels from minute 1 to 90 and his ability to block passing lanes and press incredibly well. If Chelsea defend poorly, that's usually a team systemic thing. And sometimes, I mean, you could actually blame Mason Mount for not finishing off a lot of chances he gets, but a lot of the other forwards have that issue as well. One thing Lampard does want to maintain throughout his side is he wants to win the ball back quickly for a lot of effort. In many ways, it's like Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool side, more so earlier when they're really deploying the game and press, but I guess that's the main thing, the main theme, I guess, you could say for Frank Lampard's Chelsea. Young, fast, exciting, high octane goals, possession. I mean, Chelsea were the first team to have more possession than a Pep Guardiola side when he was at home, which is interesting. Anyway, what do you guys think? I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions on Frank Lampard's Chelsea and his tactical approach. Do you like the way he's playing? Is there something else that you'd like to see him do with this Chelsea football club side? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this content, guys, why not like the video? That helps me out a lot. Follow me on social media on both Instagram and Twitter at FootballYannick. That's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. 
And my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.